Good morning. This is S.K. Gaush. I would like to welcome you to our web seminar this morning. Uh, today's topic is seismic detailing of special shear walls and coupling beams by ACI 31811 as well as ACI 31814. Uh, we will talk about wall piers also before the seminar ends. Okay, the uh, starting, I, I thought this was a good starting point by, by uh, pointing out that seismic design in its very essence is an exercise in trade-off between strength and inelastic deformability. If we are prepared to design for a lot of strength, we don't need a lot of inelastic deformability. If we want to design for low strength, then we will need a significant degree of inelastic deformability. This term inelastic deformability is the ability of a structure to continue to carry full factor gravity loads as it deforms beyond the stage of elastic response. Elastic response means damage-free response. No residual displacement. The earthquake passes, the structure comes, we, we get the structure back intact. Okay? Now, if we design for a low strength level, then if the uh, when the earthquake induced forces equal and then exceed the supplied strength level the structure will start cracking and yielding in places that will be the beginning of inelastic deformations which are not recoverable which are associated with damage in order to maintain stability the inelastic deformations can be more than the inelastic deformability of the structure, the range of displacements over which full factor gravity loads can be sustained. The larger the range of inelastic displacements over which gravity can be sustained, the larger the inelastic deformability, the lower the need for strength, the shorter the range of inelastic displacements over which gravity can be sustained, the lower the inelastic deformability, the larger the need for strength. <clears throat> inelastic deformability comes from proper detailing of the structural members and the joints. This is, this is very, very important. So if we want to design for a low strength level, we would need to do fancy detailing which will which, which will equip our structures with a high degree of inelastic deformability. In our codes, which now are all based on one or the other edition of the IBC, chapter 16 sets the strength level, the, the strength for which we design our structure. Detailing rules are given in the materials chapters, 19 for concrete, 21 for masonry, 22 for steel, 23 for wood. Now these materials chapters are, as you know by now, are uh, <laughs> not complete unto themselves in the code. Each of them refer to the respective material standard. So chapter 19 references ACI 318 for detailing requirements. The requirements themselves are not in chapter 19. Now in ACI 318 and other material standards, we have formally defined uh, or identified three levels of detailing ordinary, intermediate, and special. So these are pretty formalized. In ACI 318, the ordinary detailing rules are in the main body of ACI 318. If we are talking about the 2011 edition, 
that would be chapters 1 through 18 and just one subsection in sec in chapter 21 if you have an ordinary moment frame in design category b